Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. As you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but today I'm in my friend Jerry's home theater here in Wisconsin and Illinois. We're doing the home theater crawl series. This is gonna be awesome, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Today we're gonna be looking at an incredible home theater and I'm gonna let Jerry tell you all about his home theater from the screen to the speakers to the projector and just some cool stuff that he's implemented in his home theater. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'll be making some really, really fun videos over the next few weeks. Jerry, why don't you give us a great tour of your home theater? Hello everyone, my name's uh, Jerry. I'm from uh, Lamont, Illinois. Welcome to my theater. I wanna give a big thank you to Youth Man for choosing me as one of the very few uh, to experience this with them. So I uh, just wanted to guide you through my theater. This is the uh, Seymour AV screen. Um, it's a 150 inches wide. Uh, it's a constant area screen. Uh, so you can do both a 16 by nine. You get a, a 150 inch 16 by nine image diagonally, or you can get 163 inch 2.4 aspect ratio. So it kind of provides a the benefits of of two uh, aspect ratios in this area. You do get bars, but uh, mostly in a room like this, you don't really see them as much. Uh, the next step is the uh, speakers that I'm running here. I'm running a, a full JTR system. So this is uh, comprised of a 7.4.4 system. So that means there's seven uh, speakers on the base. Uh, four Atmos and then four subs and just to kind of go go along with uh, what type of speakers and subs I'm using uh, Behind this screen. There's three JTR 212 RTs uh, there's two uh, JTR 4000 TLs the captivator TLs behind this screen uh, Going up now to the uh, Atmos channels. I'm running uh, four slanted uh, uh, JTR HT 110s um, and then for the side surrounds, as well as the rear speakers, uh, these are also the JTR um, 110 HTs. That's basically the, uh, the speakers. There's also uh, motion actuators I have for the seating. Uh, they're not connected right now. That's, that's for the near future. Um, the next step will be the, uh, the seating I have here. So this is a seating that I have from uh, HT Market. Um, very comfortable chairs. These are the Clark models. Um, exactly what I was looking for. That's comfort, a lot of flexibility, um, just a lot of features and just something to keep you comfortable for a long period of time. Um, uh, another thing I wanted to bring up is the room dimensions. Uh, so we're looking at uh, 27 feet deep by 13 and a half feet wide. And this is also in the, ba in the basement setting. So took something that uh, was pre-existing and tried to drape it with some black velvet fabric, um, some uh, GOM acoustic material, and uh, just building a platform and making use of the space without doing a lot of construction. So that's, that's basically how I ended up uh, working on this setting. Um, the projector I'm using to project the image is a JVC NX7. Has been a wonderful projector, actually my first projector, but um, definitely it won't be my last. All right, so uh, I wanted to talk about the screen a little bit more. So this is a Seymour AV uh, screen. It's per basically purchased in. This is their frame. So it's a continuous uh, frame all the way around. So it really holds up pretty well. Um, this is a uh, center stage a XD um, acoustically transparent uh, screen. So if you look up close, you could definitely see the weave, but sitting back where, uh, where we currently have the seats, which is about 12 feet, four inches from the screen. Uh, you don't see any of the weave and it looks absolutely amazing. It sounds amazing. You don't get any of the uh, sound basically ab absorbed or, or deflected from within the screen. So we'll, we'll take this down so everyone can see what's behind the screen. And we're using our trusty helper mark here. I'm not sure if you guys recognize them. <laughs> I'm not showing my best side. Yeah, so this, this uh, whole screen with, with this uh, aluminum framing is probably about maybe 50 to 60 pounds. 
All right, so now that we have the uh, screen removed here, I just wanted to show you what the what behind the screen looks like. Um, all this power of sound that you're getting. Yet again, the, the 212 RTs, which have a 12 inch uh, woofers and uh, a two way coaxial compression driver, which uh, does sound very, very good. Uh, this isn't the prettiest setup, but it's, it's behind the screen. No one sees it. And basically this is all uh, safe and sound material. It's all stacked up, I'm trying to create a base trap. So it kind of uh, keeps it from basically uh, bouncing off and just uh, muddying up the base. So uh, another uh, a panel I created here uh, just to kind of help with the SBIR. Um, the, and going, on, going forward, so these are the, the JTR 4000 subs. Uh, these are the same ones as, as the ones in the back, but in a different form factor. I do prefer these. Um, it, it's, it's hard to tell why, but uh, they just uh, look very intimidating and just uh, much better to me. But I have, the, I have them facing sideways. Subwoofers, when, they, when they're playing, they kind of play in a sphere. So it doesn't matter which orientation that you have. But I have it in this particular way, um, mainly because the ports are firing sideways instead of onto the screen and causing the, the jello effect on, on the image. Uh, so, and in the back over here is, uh, are basically what I have here is just two layers of Lin Acoustic. So I have a first layer of Lin Acoustic's uh, duct liner. Then there's a sheet of, of seven mil plastic and then another uh, layer of Lin Acoustics. They're, they're about one inch that I purchased locally in a roll and basically uh, it install this in here. And what it does is that it really uh, deadens the sound as you can kind of hear with my voice. It really uh, stops any reverberation and it kind of helps with, with, with the uh, SBIR. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I have the brackets here that it was, the uh, screen was hung on and yeah that's pretty much it you can see all the firepower that we have here all right and, and one of the i also wanted to touch base on the uh the fabric material i'm using here so this is a uh, sy fabrics uh triple black velvet that i'm using throughout the whole entire room um with a certain amount of lighting you could see some of the creases imperfections but when the lights go up you have an infinite black ceiling really immerses you into the picture um, really shows off those inky uh, contrast levels that you see that you hear a lot on the JVC. And I also wanted to show you how I attach these. So um, on the soffit area, uh, this is all of this entire ceiling and soffit area is a drop down ceiling. So it's got a steel track and I'm using magnets. So I'll take one of these down just to show you. So you can see I used uh, duct tape. This is a uh, one eighth inch uh, MDF board that I use for this particular situation. There's magnets here that attach to the actual track. This is wrapped over here. And uh, I also did use some carpet tape on the other side. So this just comes to show you how much reflections you can get off of a white ceiling. And attaching this just completely takes all that, all that reflection away. This is the back of my theater or the full theater area here this is the front of the theater. We can access through the curtains. Um, I have my uh, column here, which houses the JTR 110 speaker. There's also outputs back here, uh, or rather there's an output for the future Krausen motion actuator that I plan on connecting that I already have. And this is an HDMI port. So any room measurements or anything else I plan on doing, I plug that in directly, have access to it instead of moving the rack and trying to reach into the back of my processor or having a HDMI cable extended all the way back here. So it's just an elegant convenience factor. Um, panning to this side, this is a, a long time collection. Uh, start off when Blu-rays were first introduced. This is probably back in uh, 2007. So as you can see, the collection grew. 4K got introduced. We have some games in here. Um, some figurines uh, for movie collectibles and just uh, a lot of movies. Right now I'm planning on transitioning everything over to a digital stream. So introducing another NAS into my network system and planning on doing basically uh, 
all the movies on the fly, having everything lossless. I do like the streaming, um, the convenience of it, but there's something about having quality movies with quality sound, just adds that much more into the immersion. So I wanted to talk about these subs again and what makes these so special. Uh, basically, you, you have the, the speed of a pro driver and you have the, the power of, of either a, a competition car uh, type of driver uh, that can really produce low frequency range, really add that tactile feel, but also add a lot of finesse. Um, this, this sub actually really uh, reproduced exactly what I was looking for, and it's mainly introducing realism into movies, um, being able to feel those gunshots and such. Uh, this just adds so much um, impact. Um, but the reason why I chose uh, to go with the uh, JTR, so I have two in front right now. Um, they're all the 4000 models. Uh, they're all connected to one 20 amp circuit. And surprisingly, uh, no matter how loud we're playing today, how much more impact and um, it, uh, people's ears gave out, uh, these subs have not blown a circuit breaker, surprisingly. So uh, this, this just adds so much more realism, so much more impact. Um, they, they can be violent or they can be very delicate when you're listening to a guitar solo or so or such. These are also the, uh, the JTR 110 HT speakers. Um, this is convenient to put it on top of the sub over here. Uh, ideally, I wanted to mount to the door, but it was a little more, more uh, involved with work. So um, the height, the location of it, uh, figure this is good. And putting on this type of foam pad, uh, because these speakers are textured uh, with the paint finishing that it has on here, uh, this really does grip. It doesn't matter how, much, how loud and how impactful the sub is. Um, this does not move, it stays in place. Um, these are also the uh, cross and motion actuators I mentioned before. So these are going to go underneath the seat. Um, at the moment I have two, I plan to add two more and install these uh, underneath the seats just to provide a little bit more, uh, more uh, punch to a more tactile sensation to movies, but also be able to tame down the subs at night when the kids are sleeping. And then also maintain that tactile feel without you know, blasting these subs. Uh, so also wanted to touch base. Um, everything right now is controlled by the uh, Harmony HTP1. So as you can see, it does provide uh, a lot of features here. We have uh, different direct uh, slots or, or filters that we have uh, played today and, and tested out. Definitely these do go to 16, maybe beyond, but we haven't uh, decided to go that far or no one actually wanted to. So this is what we're currently using on these. Um, everything's controlled by a Logitech uh, Harmony remote. This is the Elite version. I know they're currently out of stock now and they stopped producing them, but if you could get your hands on one of them, I'd get this one. And also a smart companion in case this one does um, die out on you. You could also use a, a secondary remote, which I also uh, picked up. Um, and then also going back over here, this is uh, my uh, two, two of uh, movie collectibles. We have a uh, half scale endoskeleton. I could turn this on. You can see how it lights up. So the whole movie, uh, movie love, as well as a home theater, all spanned from the Terminator 2 when my parents uh, put that on when I was uh, close to about six or seven years old. And this movie just resonated so much with me. Absolutely love it. Um, this figure also resonated maybe one day in the future. I'd like to get a, a life-size statue of it, but as of now, due to space and, and how costly things are, I figured uh, we'd probably just settle for the half scale. Um, and then also uh, panning over, we also have a life-size uh, bust of Darth Vader here, which is from uh, Sideshow Collectibles, also an amazing piece. Uh, do really enjoy this one. Uh, just just adds so much more presence into the room and kind of just gives you that that movie movie theater vibe.
This is also uh, one of my side surrounds. As you can tell, it's it's still a work in progress. Um, it, trying to decide how to frame this out and how to cover it up. Uh, so this is also the JTR 110 HT. Uh, also with this column, it it's, does have uh, another piece here that is on attached by uh, speaker guys or speaker grill guys. And basically comes off, you can get access to it in case you need to move the speaker or, or do something or just store a bunch of junk in there or whatever it may be. Uh, it's just two of them at, at, at this time and hopefully it will be completed soon. And this is also uh, the, uh, the main uh, char or character here is the uh, JVC NX7 projector. Uh, first projector I ever had, but the amount of immersion and the screen size that you can get really kind of gives you that home or that movie theater experience that uh, everyone always tries to get with either TVs or such that, that can never uh, come to fruition. Uh, it's a big item. I know it looks, seems pretty low, but definitely gives me enough headspace. But anyone taller than me, uh, I'll definitely probably put some cones up or, or something to keep them from bumping into it. But it's definitely uh, been one of the greatest purchases I've, I've had in this theater. All right, so I also wanted to show you guys the, the rack, the, the brains behind the whole theater here. So this is uh, Omni Mount Designs, a rack I bought uh, years ago. It's a 27 unit rack. Um, and what, what I like about this rack is it's got panels on the back, the sides, everything is accessible. If you need to uh, work on any of the uh, wire management, as you can see, there's a bulk of cables coming out of everything running all over the place. Um, and this isn't even the network rack, but it does have an Ethernet cable that plugs in here that does provide uh, all the network con connectivity. I prefer everything being wired instead of wireless, so there's no dropouts or, or any decrease in, uh, in quality. So just going along with the rack. So this is an AC Infinity fan controller. This controls the fans on top. Um, also will control the, uh, some of the other fans I plan on installing on the amps and such. This is... Uh, the HTP one from a uh, mono price of monolith HTP one and it's been a phenomenal processor um, it seems like everything's been worked out absolutely love this thing uh, going along I have the uh, Panasonic uh, UB420 uh, so doesn't have Dolby Vision but projectors don't use Dolby Vision so this would suffice and adds just enough next we have our Surge X a protector doesn't have any MOVs um, has, has a really good proprietary technology, which um, instead of sacrificing itself, it will go ahead and, and basically disconnect the power and reconnect it. So almost like it's, it's a auto circuit breaker. So it's a very, very uh, great device. Going along a bit lower here, we have the uh, Nvidia Shield, as well as the uh, Apple TV. Pri primarily use the Nvidia Shield. Uh, that's where I have uh, most of my movie collection stored on the NAS that I can access. And then Apple TV for, for any other uh, dedicated uh, uh, applications for, for that product. Next in line, we have the uh, PlayStation 5. I was lucky, lucky enough to get a pre-order on this one. So I've um, been gaming on that, not as much as I'd like to, but definitely a, a great unit. And then we have some drawers where I keep uh, controllers here. Um, keys and whatnot, uh, more important devices, and just some miscellaneous uh, wires. We have a calibrator uh, here for the projector I still need to use, and uh, basically any of the screws or, or anything else I need to uh, grab on the fly. Uh, going along uh, here, I, I do plan on either putting a blank panel or maybe getting a Lumigen of some sort, some type of video processor. So I think in the meantime, I'll probably put a panel in, in place. This is a Cherry amplifier. Um, it, it's a Class D amplifier, very small chassis, very lightweight, but definitely adds a lot of power and finesse to your sound. It's definitely dead silent and absolutely love this thing. Uh, going for, further, for the rear channels, I have the uh, Buckeye uh, amplifier. Basically, it's composed of three 502 Hypex amplifiers. So at six channels, this is power in the Atmos, um, as well as the rear channels, which is absolutely overkill because it does provide 500 watts per channel, which uh, don't believe I, I will ever use that much, but 
you know, it's I, I love to have the headroom and not be able to uh, bring any of my equipment to limitation. So and then here is what I have for the Krausens I plan on installing. So it's a crown amp. Um, this will provide enough power uh, to the Krausens, maybe a little bit too much. So I can also tame it down. Um, and then I also have a mini DSP uh, that's also plugged in, which will be used for, for the Krausens to uh, basically fine tweak the uh, the curve uh, or of where I plan to cross over uh, the Krausens. But yeah, this is this is basically the rack I, I don't think I'll be adding much to it, maybe a home theater PC in the future or so, but then I would have to expand on the rack. But um, if you guys have the space, I would highly, highly recommend having some type of rack form because it does add a really nice modular design and keeping everything nice and professional looking. I do have to do some wire management in the back, but that's uh, that's uh, another project for another day. Thank you guys for uh, touring this uh, with me. Uh, I, I wanted to give uh, a very heartfelt and thanks to my uh, wife who has been very supportive of this hobby, who has stayed up several nights helping me with this theater and has basically enjoyed this with me as well. And I do really love her and I just wanted to give her, you know, a lot of a lot of thanks for that. All right, well, I want to thank you guys for uh, touring my theater. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to Tony uh, for organizing all this and uh, bringing Youth Man here. He's been a, a wonderful guest. I definitely uh, enjoyed talking to him in person, showing the theater, uh, discussing basically how I got into this hobby. Uh, I want to thank Mark uh, for basically helping me uh, through this process. This is this is a working process, last minute work that I needed. He helped me with some of the files and and uh, just getting uh, Dirac and, and everything set up the, the way it should be. And just wanna thank the other guests that, that we had out here. Uh, we had uh, Nick, Jared, and Heath. And it just been uh, just an amazing day uh, having everyone here and just kind of sharing the same same hobbies that, uh, that we all had and that brought us together. And with that said, just want to thank you guys again for uh, uh, taking this tour with me. Take care.